Today, we're gonna to be talking about finding traction and stored energy so this doesn't happen to you. So doing hill climbs when the conditions are muddy, when it's slick, when you're trying to go up a hill that looks like this and you know you're just not gonna get any traction, how do you deal with it? You can't go up and just start getting on the gas. You're gonna spin out everywhere and you can't always get a huge run up at it either. Usually they're gonna put a turn or something like that in front of this type of hill at a trial and you're just gonna be spinning wheels unless you do this technique. Rev the bike up before you climb the hill. Now this is very similar to the rev squat go that you have heard me talk about in the past, but we're gonna add into that some body positioning, some drills to work on, especially to get traction, because even when you do it right, sometimes it looks a little bit like this. I know you guys like it when I include my failures as well as the successes. So just trying to be very real with you guys about my ability and the things I'm still learning. It's slippery on that hill. So here we're gonna build that RPM up nice and high, making sure I got enough stored flywheel energy to make it all the way to the top. So starting off, we're just gonna look at using the throttle and understanding the full throttle versus a first third, two thirds, and then full go. If you're anything like me, you potentially have never revved your bike up all the way to the throttle stop. I hadn't done it for the entire first year that I owned the bike. It's something to get over that RPM anxiety, afraid the whole bike is just gonna take off on you. So here I'm just consistently getting to one third or the first third of throttle. Now, before we start feeding out the clutch, I just wanna talk through body position. This is gonna be super important. You cannot lean back. You cannot just lean forward, you've got to dip down into it. But when you dip, you don't want to hit that rear brake as you see what's happening here. So if you're the type of rider who's always covering the rear brake, especially when you're worried about wheelies, you're not going to be able to do it here. So you can see I'm just dipping down, my knees are coming forward towards the front axle, and as a result, the toes go down. You also notice that I'm getting tons of traction. The gray part of the sidewall is actually going away. As I'm dipping down, I'm adding body weight into the bike so that as I let out the clutch, I'm getting more traction, more surface area on the rear tire. And if you want more skip to about four minutes into the long road to splats where I go into detail on the RSG technique. Now, when I'm standing up in my normal tall position, my center of gravity is up way high and further back. But when I squat down, you guys can see the center of gravity is low and it is further forward, which is going to be super important to control that wheelie. Now, all of you MX riders are familiar with this, revving up the bike and then going. We're going to start out with just a third throttle, hopefully build it up to about half or even two thirds throttle body position, super important to get those knees down in order to control your weight over the front tire so it's not coming up too high. This is not squat, then rev and go. This is going to be rev, squat, and go. I would suggest doing this in multiple gears, even up through fourth gear, just to get used to the drive that your machine is getting as you let out that clutch. Just really wanna emphasize that your balls are on the tank, guys. That's what's gonna keep you from looping out as well as good clutch control. This is not a clutch pop. It is smoothly letting out the clutch, trying to accelerate as fast as possible without letting the front wheel come up too high, as well as learning the timing of when to dip the body and release the clutch. And then finally to modulate the clutch or pull it back in slightly if the front wheel does come up too high rather than chopping the throttle off. Where I'm pointing now is a little bit of a steeper hill where I was sliding out and fell back in the mud. So we're gonna start out a little bit further down where the hill is less steep. This is a great place to get started. Now on hills of this size, you can do the proper body position and just ride up on the throttle. That does work, but that's not the point we're emphasizing. We wanna accelerate with the clutch release here. Again, not leaning forward. This is the way I used to get up hills, no doubt. Putting my head first. And then we also don't want to be leaning hips back, trying to cover the rear brake. You're just going to be looping. Now, I know some of you are not going to be able to squat as low as I can. That's okay. You just want to be getting down into it as far as you can. To a steeper area, building up the RPM, keeping the hips in towards the gas tank, sitting in, toes down to get to the top. So this hill is now dry today. Previously, it was wet and I was slipping back down. So we're going to go ahead and practice this starting from closer and closer and closer. This hill is decently steep, second gear. Definitely recommend getting plenty of run up the first time up a hill to make sure you can get all the way to the top. Now, in order to drill this and make it a little more challenging, I'm gonna move closer to the beginning of the hill, forcing myself to build up the RPM. So you can see my bike is getting closer and closer to the start of the hill, and then eventually even starting with my front wheel already going up the hill. You can add challenge by adding static balance before driving up the hill. One of the ways I coach myself is with cue words. So I'll simply say rev, toes down, look up. And that way I can remember what techniques to put into place in order to get up the hill more easily. Now, a lot of times instead of static, you'll be coming into a hill like this from a turn. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that now. 
To increase the difficulty, you can make your turn tighter and closer to the hillside in order to make sure you get completely straight to the hill, especially when it's muddy, before you rev it up and let out that clutch to get to the top. Now, occasionally you are gonna get into a wheelie, so it's important to know how to just modulate that clutch and make sure you're not getting too high, but also not letting off the momentum, which is going to cause you to not get to the top. So you can see here, I'm all weight on the back wheel, which is actually helping for traction. Now, I imagine you guys were curious to know how that descent ended, so I'll show it to you now. Oh, the things I do to film. That was terrible. And I did have one commenter say to make sure to practice this, actually lean the bike down into the hill. You can put your peg and your handlebar into the hill so that you're not rolling down. Great tip. Videos do take some time to film and especially to edit. So if you guys want to drop a super thanks and hit the donate button below, I'd be super grateful. This is kind of like buying me a virtual coffee. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because I do have a lot of exciting things happening in the month of August that you're not going to want to miss.